Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. We're glad you're here, and uh, we trust that God has given you a great day. Uh, happy Friday. Uh, I want to congratulate you. You've made it to the end of another long week, and uh, God has done some some great things here in our church over the past week. I want to encourage you to be part of it again tonight at 7 o'clock as we gather for revival meetings with, Byron, with uh, Brother Byron Fox. But let us pray together here today as we come to God's Word. Lord, our prayer today is that you'd bless your word, that you'd encourage our hearts, and that you'd help us to live appropriately. Lord, that you would help us to see things as you see them and the, and the, and the need of our lives and, and our response to the truth. And so, God, we pray that you would uh, encourage us and help us, and Lord, bring about revival in our hearts and our lives, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter number 11. 2 Kings chapter number 11. Um, so, Athaliah the, uh, has now come to the throne. She has destroyed the house of Ahaziah, except for one young man uh, who was hidden uh, in, the king's, uh, in the king's house for six years. And his name, of course, is Jehoash. And uh, the king and the high and the priest Jehoiada, uh, he decided that he was going to reveal uh, uh, th- this king, and they were going to establish him king and get rid of Athaliah. And so, uh, upon all of this, so Jehoiada he he makes this this arrangement with the captains of the guards, and and they bring this young man out. They make him king. They kill Athaliah. But that's not all they do. And I want you to draw. I want to draw your attention between uh, at beginning in verse number seventeen of 2 Kings chapter 11. The Bible says in Jehoiada, now this is the priest, he said, made a covenant between the Lord uh, and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people be, between the king also and the people. Uh, they were the Lord's people. You know, there's a, there's been a covenant made with us that, uh, that was initiated by Jesus Christ, establishing, uh, establishing us as God's people. Uh, it was the blood of the new covenant uh, Jesus shed his blood, he paid the penalty for our sin, rose again in victory from the grave, uh, has ascended back to heaven where he's seated at the right hand of the Father, where he ever lives to make intercession for the saints. Um, we are his children. Uh, we are his people. Uh, we are a peculiar people, uh, Peter calls us. Uh, but God has established this covenant. We are his people. And so what is our response in verse number 18, because the children of Israel recognized, or the children of Judah recognized that, that they were indeed God's people, they, they responded in, in, in a manner that, that you and I ought to uh, consider today. The Bible says in verse 18, it says, And all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down. His altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly. And slew me... Uh, Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars, and the, and the priests appointed officers over the house of the Lord. I want to draw your attention to one word right in the heart of verse number 18. It is the word thoroughly. Thoroughly. And so, understanding that they were God's people, and that they were called to live a life that glorified and honored Christ, a life that was not marked by their own self um, Self, uh, self pursuits uh, by their own pleasures, by their own lusts, understanding that that they were owned by God because He had purchased them. Uh, we we see here their response was to eradicate things from their life that was detrimental, and so they went in to the house of Baal and they break it down, but they did something and they broke down the altars and the images. But there's a word, they did it thoroughly. You know what the problem in our lives too often is we're not thorough. We don't allow thoroughness to take place in our lives. We allow things to remain in our life that have no place there. And because they have a footing, they, they grow. And they, be, and they end up taking a place of prominence in our lives. And, and they begin to steal the preeminence of Christ in, uh, in our life. And so as we pursue revival today, uh, as we come through this day and uh, this Saturday and Sunday, our, our prayer is that God would help us be thorough. Would you be thorough? Would you seek the Lord? And would you ask God, say, search me, O God, and know my thoughts. 
Would you, would you be thorough? Would you examine your heart, uh, examine your life to see if there's anything found that does not please the Lord? If there's anything found that is hindering the Lord's work in your life, then may God help us be thorough with the Lord today. Father, we love you and we thank you for the day you've given to us. And Lord, our prayer is that you'd help us to be thorough. Uh, Lord, help us not be casual. Um, but Lord, we pray that you would help us to be thorough in, our, in the searching of our hearts and that we would be yielded to you and uh, sensitive to what uh, your intentions are for our lives. Lord, we pray that you'd send revival. But Lord, we pray that you'd help us be clean. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. As always, it's an honor to have you. We're praying for you, and we hope to see you right here tonight at 7 o'clock for a revival meeting with Byron Fox. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.